guys. Welcome to a Ruby on Rails video, another one. This one's kind of just a, I don't know, a documentation update. If you hadn't heard, Rails 6 is on the horizon and there's actually a release candidate one out. So in light of that, I've decided to upgrade my kickoff Tailwind repo to kind of accommodate for Rails 6 because I'm going to start teaching uh, everything from that point going forward. I know Shopify and GitHub are already on Rails 6, so they're already, you know, it's already kind of safe to use, even though it is a beta at this point. So the current version is 5.2.2, I think, by default. So if you wanted to install the, the current version of the Edge release, so 5.2.3 is the actual version, sorry. Uh, but if you wanted to install the new gem, you could install it as a actual gem rails and then just do pre release like so and you get access to the latest version which is the release candidate one so that's always going to be the latest whenever you run that command uh, i've already done that on my system but i wanted to just kind of point you to what you would do in that scenario if you wanted to run this on your system uh, you might have conflicts where you have an older version of rails within your ruby environment and you might need to either remove that old version or just update to this newest, newest one for it to be the, the latest that your applications, when you run a new application, it would point to. So Rails new is what I mean. So uh, in light of that, like I said, I updated the kickoff repo. If you haven't heard of it, this is kind of just a, a way to pass a template when you run a new Rails app that configures a lot of things by default if you want it to. Uh, mine's pretty lightweight compared to uh, other ones out there, which I'll get into. Uh, which is something else I've been working on with some friends. So with that in mind, I kind of just going to walk through what changed. Um, by default, Rails 6 ships with Webpacker now, which is kind of the way to run modern JavaScript in a Rails app. And that means I could kind of get rid of a lot of stuff that I put in this main template when I first created it, uh, maybe, a, I don't even know, months back. But doing so, we only need a handful of gems. Devise, of course, is kind of my, my go-to for authentication and whatnot. I have this one called Friendly ID that allows your URLs to update to more of a slug fashion than an actual number ID that you commonly see on a Rails app by default. And then Sidekick, which is just great for background processing. I haven't done much on the channel for stuff like that, but we can get into that later on as I get more time. I'm working on my course behind the scenes, so I've had little time to do a lot of stuff related to this channel, but I, I'm trying to pump out content still so you guys are uh, still seeing some stuff. Uh, all that said, we're still doing Devise. Um, Tailwind's coming from source, and actually Tailwind's in a beta too, so I'm actually, if you look at next.tailwind, .css.com. That's kind of the new version that's coming out. I've been seeing updates to this page uh, pretty much like a daily. Adam Wathen, the creator, has been updating this. And it's, it's a sweet framework, in my opinion. It's one I've been harnessing that I just tend to not reach for frameworks, but this one is, you know, it's been really fast to work with and it's very customizable, which I really like. So and it's unopinionated too. So if you haven't used it, uh, I'm also using it in my course too. So all this stuff is bleeding edge at this point. So I'm kind of scared with the course because I want it to be out when the latest version of Rails is out. So I wanted to ship updates, you know, with all that going on. So you guys don't have to have all these conflicts and whatnot, but we'll see what happens there. Uh, hopefully it's seamless, but we'll see. Uh, so Tailwind, adding that, we're doing more of the node kind of things. So you can run bash commands in this template. So I'm running like yarn add the, the latest version of Tailwind, making a new directory to add that in. And I'm going to run this app in this video just so you guys can see what happens. And then append it to a file, importing it, configuring it, um, and then setting it up just to require the actual config and all that junk for Tailwind to work. It is a post CSS plugin, which is why we have to kind of go through leaps and bounds to get it to work there. Um, other than that, we're removing some stuff we don't need from the app, uh, like the style sheets and sidekick stuff gets set up. So basically we can, based on the user uh, level, if there's an admin, they'll be able to see this sidekick path in their login. Uh, so by default, you're not an admin. You'd have to create that with Rails console uh, when you actually fire up your app. But 
this is set up to account for that. Foreman, if you want to use Foreman, this does come with support for that. You would have to add that gem manually. So gem install Foreman. And then Foreman's just a way to like run multiple things at once in one console, uh, as opposed to opening multiple tabs in your console and running it. So commonly with Rails, you need to run the Rails server. Then you might need Sidekick and Redis or something running in the background. And then now we need Webpack to run in the background too. So you could fire all those up at once with just a form and start command. It's pretty cool. Uh, but it was kind of geared more around hosting stuff on Heroku because the proc file is kind of a Heroku thing. Um, yeah, so friendly ID. And then we'd run all this stuff after the bundle command. So all this stuff would be added and appended uh, after those gems are added to our stack and you run a Rails new app. And I had kind of just updated some messaging so you know when the app's complete. Why don't I run this just to give you some more context? I feel like I'm just blabbing. Uh, but you need to, at this point, I, you could reference this template directly in the raw fashion and try to run it. But I did get errors because there aren't some local files set up in this path. Uh, so the best thing to do is go ahead and go to this page, clone, clone it or download it. And then go into that folder and then run the next command that I'm going to run. So I'm going to go to my sites, kick off tailwind directory. That's the one that's literally what you would download. It might say master. You might change that if you want. Um, so inside here is that same uh, proc file, readme, app, lib, template. It's all the stuff that's on GitHub right now. Um, this stuff does contain some basic scaffolding styling. It's nothing, nothing too wild. Uh, but if you do run a scaffold, it would be a little customized. So why don't I run a new app and we'll see what happens. So I'll say rails new trial run. So that's the app name. And then we need to pass dash M to pass this template. So like I said, you need to be in the kickoff tailwind directory. Uh, you could rename it if you want, but you need to be within it. So you can run this local file template.rb as that template. And then when you run it, we'll go ahead and run that. It does quite a lot. Uh, Rails 6 ships with Webpacker by default, so you see it installing by default there. It does take some time to install a gajillion node packages, so be patient. Cool, so nodes installed. We're getting Webpack dev server that's installed. Now we're doing our commands, which are uh, the spring stop. We're installing device right there, configuring it by default, and then generating the user model, copying a bunch of files that I've already included in the repo that kind of just come with some styles on the device views. And then we're doing the Tailwind stuff right here. So we're configuring that, re uh, migrating the database, creating the friendly ID stuff, getting it. So it all happened in one felt swoop. So it's pretty sweet. I updated this messaging to say kickoff app successfully created. Then you'll switch to your app. So CD trial run. All right. And then you can say Rails server or S, whichever you want to run there. See, so we're on Rails 6 release candidate one. I'll go to localhost 3000. It's not going to be anything special, but there are a lot of th pre configured things just done under the hood. And it's a, a big time saver for when I'm doing videos and stuff on YouTube. So if you wanted to just try running this or play around with Rails a little bit, this is fun and quick, easy way to get up and running. So you see we have device already configured. I, I updated these styles to kind of come closer to the current next version of Tailwind. So you'll see some class name updates if you've been using a, an older version of this perhaps. Uh, but all in all, it's fairly straightforward. That might have, you know, look a little intimidating if you're new to it, but all in all, it's, um, you know, just a quick way, quick win to get an app up and running and just make it uh, a little seamless to get started with some idea you might have. Now, that being said, this repo is highly inspired by a, another kind of kickoff template called Jumpstart from Chris Oliver. He runs GoRails.com, and I highly recommend you check out that site. I go there quite often, and he and I are actually in the same neighborhood. Uh, so we actually recently teamed up on something that's more or less inspired by Jumpstart, uh, but we go ahead and um, make it more extended. So Jumpstart Pro is just that. So I wanted to shout, give this a shout out since he and I and Jason Charns are working on it together. Here we are. Um, but it's a basically a you know super mega template 
from Rails that you can run, and it comes with tons of things by default, as well as support for quite a bit of things. Uh, so you can save time configuring your app and just kind of get off to the wheels working on your idea rather than spending time pulling your hair out trying to get your app to work in such a way. There's, of course, authentication. There's payments, which they support PayPal or Stripe. Uh, Tailwind CS. S is a default. Of course, there's API support. You can act as another user if you want. Announcements and notifications come by default. Uh, invoicing, it's super customizable and there's easy upgrades. We're in that point right now where we're waiting for Rails 6 to kind of launch and then kind of onboarding some beta users. So if you wanted to be notified or learn more, definitely check out jumpstartrails.com. Just enter your email address and subscribe there. And then other than that, you can check out more from Chris and Jason, uh, of course, me of two. So we've got all of our links and stuff down here if you want to check those out. But this is what I've been working on as well as my course. So there's an entire design system I built around it for the front end and we use Tailwind and stuff to make it look awesome. So this is just kind of a landing page for now, but this will update to include some maybe documentation and more about the, the application template that you can get when you subscribe or um, actually opt in. I think it will be a flat rate. We're still working out the final details of that. So if you're interested, definitely check that out. Uh, you can also check out Chris's free version of Jumpstart, which there's one on GitHub. It's got quite a few stars. He's he's um, been working on it quite a bit and it was the big inspiration behind that project. So this is kind of an inspiration behind mine as well, if you want to see where it kind of came to fruition. So it is a time saver. So definitely check it out as well as his video on uh, how to use it. Coming up, I'll be doing a little bit more about uh, the theory behind certain things in Rails. Um, I wanted to do one on polymorphic associations. So something like a uh, tag or comments that you can add to pretty much any model, no matter the model, instead of kind of making it an only one way solution. Uh, we added comments and a few series in this on my channel that kind of just only worked in that scenario. And it would have been cool if I added support where comments could have been added to anything. Uh, so that's kind of that polymorphic style that I wanna get into. Amongst that, I'll probably do an, another future Let's Build that might be more on the uh, e-commerce side. I, I did get a poll on my channel recently that most of the users wanted to see something like that. So we'll see what I can do with that. There is a gem called Spree, I think that's kind of a status quo of the um, e-commerce in Rails right now. I don't know. Uh, I need to do more research on that, but I wanted to see what's up with that and see if what we can do to get something out the door. So all of that and more to come. My course is in the editing phase. I'm about halfway through editing. It's taking some serious time and work. If you're curious and wanting to learn more about it and haven't heard of it, it's called Hello Rails. Uh, definitely check it out and you can get notified on the landing page, hellorails.io. But it's a full course from the aspect of maybe a newcomer to the framework or someone new to programming who wants a full stack uh, approach and want, wants to build an app from start to finish. So I literally take you from creating the new app to deploying it to a production site in that course. And we'll talk about a ton of things related to Ruby on Rails, whether it's conventions, testing, um, design, all that stuff. So check it out. I'm hoping it's out within the next month. Uh, that's a hope, big hope, because there's a lot of work to do still. And I'm trying to juggle a full-time job in it. So your patience is appreciated. Okay, I'll quit yakking and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.